Thank you so much, Susanna. Okay, so uh, while discussing overfishing, it would be impossible not to mention sharks. So I actually have a couple of slides for you that I'll show you myself. And then we'll go into questions. I have quite a few. I've been writing a lot uh, for both Liz and uh, Susanna. And then, of course, we'll open the questions to the audience as well. Uh, we'd like to thank you again for being here. And um, there will be a chance for you guys to ask some questions to, to all of us. Again, so let me show you some quick slides on sharks and I'll get back here. Okay, so very quickly, uh, let me just start by saying that uh, I'm assuming most of you in the audience or some of you are Portuguese and there's like this myth that Portugal doesn't have sharks in its waters, which couldn't be farther from the truth. This is a mako shark, a very impressive shark, same family as the white shark, it's a, a lamniform. And I usually ask people in the audience, does this thing swim in Portuguese waters or not? Yes or no? Yes. Can, okay, yes it does. It's actually very, very common. Manta rays, which we typically see on the National Geographic Channel in the Caribbean, in, in Palau, Fiji, etc also very abundant in our waters, particularly in the Azores. And this is a blue shark, actually the, uh, this uh, uh, photo was taken by my former student, Nuno Rodrigues, a brilliant photographer. Uh, this was taken in the Azores. And this is in fact an extremely common species, not just in Portuguese waters, but all waters around the world. And this is in fact the most caught uh, shark by commercial fisheries around the world. So. Uh, I don't need to tell you what the, the huge problem that uh, sharks are facing these days. They're taking by the, the millions. There's an estimate of uh, 100 million sharks being collected every year. In fact, this, this week at this very meeting on Tuesday, there was this panel, very interesting panel, uh, organized by Sea Shepherd. And a few of the presentations, in fact, discussed that that number is most likely an underestimation. So we're probably looking at way more than 100 million sharks. There's the, this all began, well, not exclusively, but it all began with this book, the one on the left, and then there was a, a second edition on the right. Uh, Dr. William Lane uh, made a study that sharks don't get cancer. This is actually not true. Uh, but this book uh, actually drove the pharmaceutical industry to kill millions and millions of sharks uh, to get cartilage from their, from their uh, spinal cord, to make cartilage pills, which allegedly would cure cancer, which does not. And in fact, sharks do get cancer. They get less cancer than other vertebrates, but they still do get some tumors, and this is absolutely not true. And then, of course, we've got shark fin soup, uh, which relies on shark fins. And this is, I don't need to tell you, it's a worldwide uh, uh, phenomenon that everybody is very much aware, especially in this forum, which is creating a huge, huge problem. And it's just uh, the demand for these things is incredible. And the sad, sad part is that we all think of the same countries when we see shark uh, being fin. We think Asia and quite a few countries. Well, a lot of these things are actually being collected in our waters by Portuguese boats, by French boats, by Spanish boats, and then they're exported to Asia. So it's not just Asia doing the problem. This is a piece of news that came out uh, last year. Uh, the GNR, the Portuguese military police, actually caught some illegal fins on a Portuguese fishing vessel in Sizimbra, just uh, an hour south from us where we are right now. And uh, we all kind of know that this, this is way more abundant than we would like it to be. Uh, now, the, let me just very briefly, and I'm nearly done, talk about this very cool campaign that Wild Aid is uh, promoting in Asia. A very, very successful campaign where they get local artists. Um, uh, this is Yao Ming, is um, a basketball player who actually plays in the United States, but movie stars um, and uh, all sorts of very famous uh, people in Asia are basically giving their hand to uh, wild species. Yao Ming is the, the face for let's not eat shark fin soup. And the whole campaign is on the grounds of very much like the video we just saw from Susanna. It's not really just the fishers who are 
you know, the demons in the story, the consumers, the public who buys these things, who buys uh, the rare fish, who buys the shark fin soup, who buy all of these things, they're very much um, part of the, of the equation as well. Jackie Chan, for example, is the, the sponsor for Rhinoceros. Um, the Stop Finning campaign was a very, very, very good example of how society, of uh, us all and social media can do great, great things. We had this goal to get one million signatures on this petition uh, on, uh, with a deadline of two years, which seemed easy at first. But then we kind of slugged around it and we shared it on Facebook and this and that. And we had like about a month before the deadline and we were only halfway there. 500,000 and, and all was lost. And we thought, well, there's just no way we're going to make this thing. And then Germany uh, just jumped to the rescue and the Germans just went crazy and mobilized like, like insane insanity. And in one weekend, they gathered like 300,000 signatures and then all hope was back again. And then we, Portugal and every country in Europe really participated that this is a Portuguese shark association that was heavily promoting this and uh, and we got it we got it and uh, the way this works is each country in the european union has to meet a certain quota portugal had uh, five fifteen thousand um, signatures we actually got more than that sixteen thousand something france needed fifty five thousand we they got fifty nine thousand so basically uh, and seven countries needed to meet their quota and we got like 12 meeting that quota. So we basically did it. And we did it by using social media. You know, we, we shared the hell out of this thing and we actually did it. Uh, one thing we also did was to r really heavily um, tell the public to email the government. This, uh, this email is actually not um, updated anymore because we had elections and every time we have elections, every, every government cabinet changes its name here in Portugal. It's just a thing that we think it's fun doing. But anyway, the point is the whole country uh, emailed the, the minister of the sea and we actually got Mako sharks protected in Portugal as well. And I'm not going to bother you with these small numbers there. I'll just point out those highlighted numbers. You'll see weights of 50 something, 60 something, 80 something kilos. This is the average weight of uh, mako sharks caught by Portuguese fishing boats. And we have, this, this, this is raw data from logbooks, from the Diários de Bordo, so from logbooks. Now, mako sharks breed at about their reproduction size. It uh, is about 150 kilos for females, 110 kilos for males. So these numbers are blatantly low. I mean, they're being caught way, way below what they should be. Uh, but this is the good news, thanks to everybody sending emails, uh, mako sharks are actually, uh, the fishery was actually banned until the end of last year, and we're now working extremely hard to make this last longer and longer. And that's basically what I had to share with you. We'll now move on to questions, and keep in mind we'll have a few questions here in the, with our panelists, but then we'll open to, the, to you guys as well. And again, thank you so much for being here again.